Hi everybody, welcome to Curiosity Corner. We're outside today, one of my favorite places. We're down by the ocean at Enderts Beach in Del Norte County. And today we're gonna to be talking about the ocean. We're gonna be talking about the ocean that we live right here, right by the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is one of the five oceans um, on our planet and it is the largest ocean and it's the deepest ocean and it's right in our backyard. If you look out here today, you're going to see that it is high tide, a very high tide. So high tide and low tide happen two times within about a 24 hour period or a day. So high tide is not necessarily the time when you wanna go exploring, but it's certainly the time to come and see the power of the ocean and remind yourself, of course, to always be so careful and never ever turn your back on it. As we look down here, you can see that the waves are coming all the way up to what's called the bluff or the shoreline. And they're doing that to do what's really important every year in the winter time, and that's to deposit sand. Kind of helps build up our shoreline. Lots of people like to come to the ocean in the summer because they think it's wonderful and it's warm and you can go surfing and you can lay out in the sun. But um, really, the winter is an awesome time to come down to the water as well. You can see that the ocean is incredibly powerful and these waves are bringing in so much water and depositing not only sand, but all kinds of treasures. So in a few minutes, we're gonna be talking about the treasures that we find. But for now, let's just listen to the power of the ocean. You can also see, boys and girls, that the waves come in what's called sets. So they come in two or three or four, sometimes five in a set. And as you look further out to the deep, deep ocean out that way, you'll see that there's just kind of little ripples. Well, as the wind pushes over that water, it's going to create those waves and allow them to come right up here and break. And when they do, we get this white foam and those beautiful waves that we love to play in and enjoy. So pretty, isn't it? Almost looks like gems down there. I love the ocean. We're gonna learn some more about it too today. So right down here at these cliffs at the end of Enderts Beach, we can see that the ocean is still, of course, bringing those waves in. Sometimes when we're down at the ocean, we might find a log or some other strange thing that's like, did that come from the ocean? And the question, the answer is no, not really. It is transported through the water system like rivers and streams and, and comes down and it is deposited in the ocean and rolled around out there until a wave comes big enough that can, can help it up and throws that log right up on the shoreline. But you can see the waterfalls that have come because we've had a lot of rain that's coming from up on the mountains and depositing down in the ocean. So important to take care of all the water sources we have, our lakes, our rivers, our streams. We don't want to put things in that because they're eventually going to end up here in our beautiful ocean. Well, we're down right on the water on Crescent Beach. And I'm doing something that I always tell boys and girls never to do. I have my back to the ocean, but I'm listening and I'm watching because you never know those waves. They may look small, but it's the runoff that keeps coming and it just can come right up on you if you're not watching. This foam that you see, which is so beautiful, is actually called, uh, they're from diatoms or, or microscopic organisms that live out in the ocean. And when the ocean's churned up like you can hear it is today, we get a lot of foam and it's deposited here. It's nothing you wanna put in your mouth. It's okay to touch. But um, it's just a really cool thing about the ocean. Every time I come down there, it's exciting, it's new, it changes, and it makes me more and more curious. And I hope it does you too. We're gonna gather a few things, talk about them, back up at a safer place than right down here. So here we are, down at Crescent Beach, listening to the very loud ocean. I was thinking, why did I call this Curiosity Corner? And I think it's because I've always had lots of questions. Since I was a little girl, I had books that were like, what's this? Why is this? This is 
is a, a book called I Wonder Why, and it's a series, the, I Wonder Why the Sea is Salty, and all kinds of cool questions like that. And on this page right here, every single table of content starts with a question. And you know us curious kids, we love questions. So we're going to answer some of those questions from this book and also some things that you might be wondering about right now. So when I was walking down there, I picked up some samples of things that I wanted to teach you about and share with you. The one thing I couldn't find, but I know you've seen, are books, are not books, but rocks that have holes in them. And everybody is always wondering, why does that rock have a hole? And so I'm going to explain that to you right now. Oh, the wind is not our friend, but something we always have to deal with. It says the agents of erosion, those are the things that break stuff down, uh, break down rocks. They are water and wind. We've talked about that. When the temperature changes, it affects rocks sometimes and gravity and even homeless clams and things like that who will bore down into a rock and use it for a while as a safe place. So if you see rocks like that at the beach, lucky you, um, can you take rocks from the beach? Yes. What you can't take from the beach are shells, and there's a reason for that. So the ocean can be the great recycler too, and there are certain animals that live in the ocean, like hermit crabs, that use those shells for their new home when they grow. Animals all do different things in the ocean when they grow. For instance, um, you may find at the beach, you may find some of these things right here. And this is just a piece of a carapace that we call a carapace of the crab. And this looks to be either a dungeness or a, yeah, it's a dungeness crab. And it's so cool though, you can learn so much from it. First of all, this, the crab doesn't need it anymore. He's wiggled out of it and dropped this for us to learn. And they come in all different sizes. This, you can see, is a different kind of a crab than the other one. So this could be a kelp crab, a smaller crab. This one is super cool because on the edges of it, it was old enough that barnacles, who are, when they're really small, are floating in the ocean. They attach themselves here. They're like, ooh, cool home. And they live there. Barnacles live by standing upside down and feeding their mouth, which is at the bottom, with their feet, which is at the top. The barnacles are super cool. Some of the other things that we found were shells that are not going to be anything that a hermit crab could live in, like these. These are razor black, razorback clams and you can still see where it's attached right there, where it closes up like that. And even though we're missing part of it, you can still be curious about how big it was and what it used to look like. I'm gonna take some water right now and I'm gonna pour it over this razorback clam so we can see that water is truly, 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 look at how beautiful that is that that razorback clam now looks just gorgeous and you can learn even more about it. Like what are those lines for? I don't know, but we can find out because we're curious, aren't we? Look at this, that one and this one, about the same size. Oh, and we have one more right here. Look, this one has a lot of this uh, protective covering on it and also shows the hinge. I'm going to do that too. Ready? Oh yeah, there we go. Clean it up, clean it up, clean it up, clean it up. So a hinge like you have on, to open and close a door opens and closes the Razorback clam too. It also open and closes this guy, which is a bigger clam. We don't have any more of them except that little hinge. And this is a mussel shell. And this is a very big mussel shell, don't you think? Because when we look at it, clean it up, clean it up. Um, you can see that blue right here is very thick and this shell is very heavy which tells me that it's an old shell which is wonderful that we can still learn so much from it. 
let's take a look at some of the rocks that we found. The rocks that you find down at the ocean are going to be round. They may be big or small, but they're all going to be a little bit smooth. None of them are going to have really sharp edges on them, and I wonder if you know why. Look at this one. This one looks like a game piece. It's so round. What do you think? Why would a rock get round? Listen to the ocean. That's pretty powerful. And as these rocks tumble and tumble and tumble, they get brought up to the ocean surface and onto the shore. Speaking of what's in the ocean surface, let's read our book for today. This is an exciting book. I have so many books about the ocean, it was hard for me to pick one for you today. But this is called Commotion in the Ocean. So you're going to meet lots of animals that live way out, whoo, way out in the sea, in the ocean, and some that live closer. So let's get started. Commotion in the Ocean is by Giles Andre and David Wolichek. Oh boy, there's bubbles. Oh my goodness, we can do this. Commotion in the Ocean. There's a curious commotion at the bottom of the ocean. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature that lives beneath the sea swimming through the pages of this book. There are dolphins, whales, and penguins, jellyfish, and sharks. There's a turtle and a big white polar bear. But you can see behind the wrecks and in between the cracks. Let's take a look and find who's hiding there. Oh, the crab. The crab likes walking sideways, and I think the reason why is to make himself look sneaky and pretend that he's a spy. Turtles, we crawl up the beach from the water to bury our eggs on dry land. We lay a whole bunch, and then when they hatch, they scamper about in the sand. Oh boy, our friend the dolphins. The wonderful thing about dolphins is hearing them trying to speak. It's not, how do you do? As I would say to you, it's more like a click, a whistle, a squeak. But they are talking to each other. Ooh, angelfish. Hello, I'm the angelfish, darling. The prettiest thing in the sea. What a shame there are no other creatures as gorgeous and lovely as me. <laughs> Jellyfish. The jellyfish loves to jiggle. Can you jiggle? <laughs> Which other fish think is quite dumb? That's not very nice, huh? She knows that it's not all that useful, but jiggling is lots of fun. Shark. I swim with a grin up to greet you. See how my jaws open wide? Why don't you come a bit closer? Please take a good look inside. <laughs> Sharks. Who's next? Let's see. Ooh, a swordfish. I love to chase after small fishes. It keeps me from getting too bored. And then when I start feeling hungry, I skewer a few on my sword. There's the octopus. Remember how many legs octopus have? Oh, you got it. Five plus three more. Eight. Having eight arms can be useful. You may think it looks a bit funny, but it helps me to hold on to all my children and tickle each one in the tummy. That is a commotion in the ocean. Ooh, a stingray. That 
the bottom of the ocean. The stingray flaps his wings, but don't you get too close to him. His tail really stings. Never shake hands with a lobster. It isn't a wise thing to do. With a clippity clap and a snippity snap, he would snip all your fingers into two. Very strong pincers. Oh, the wind is more excited to turn the pages on me. Here we go, deep in the sea. Oh, now we're, we're way down deep in the sea. Miles below the surface where the water's dark and deep live the most amazing creatures that you could ever meet. They're fish of all descriptions, of every shape and size. Some have giant pointy teeth. Ooh. And some have bulging eyes. Some of them can even walk around and balance on their fins. But the strangest fish of all has glowing whiskers on its chin. Here's our last one. The blue whale. We saved the biggest for the last. There's no other beast on the planet of our great big earth like this. No other beast as big as the giant blue whale. It measures a massive 100 feet long. That's like three classrooms long. I can't believe it. From the very top of his head to the tip of his tail. But look who's also living there. Those little friends we talked about, barnacles. We just are a bunch of barnacles and all we do is cling. We know there's nothing glamorous, but it's our favorite thing. So before we finish today, I have two mysteries for you. Let's come in close and look at them. So here's one of the things I found that I need to go study and look up because I don't know exactly what this is. No one is living in here anymore. It's see-through. And I think that someone just left it and scooted out the other end, or it's a, some sort of an egg sac. I'm not sure. So that's my one thing to look up. And this is one thing that was one of the most interesting things we found today. And it's very, very light because everybody's gone. So this is individual animals lived in each one of these little tiny, um, kind of like a shell, but it is very soft. You can even, when you study it with a, with a magnifying glass, you can see up inside there, it's hollow. So whatever came out of there isn't very big, and right now it's floating around in our ocean. Isn't that wonderful? Who knows what it's going to be? So a little thing for curiosity for me, and that's how I love to start my day with you and end my day. So remember, boys and girls, that this world really is a wonderful place as long as you're full of wonder and you're curious. Bye, until next time.